Oh, it's so cold today. I'm wrapped up really, really warm in the den. It's Benita, welcome to Benita Doodles. And today we're gonna to be doing the time-lapse slightly different because you've got my mug in the picture with you. I thought it might be a bit nicer than just listening to a voice rambling on in the background. So yeah, welcome to the uh, the new time-lapse. Um, I'm still pretty new to pastel. Yeah, I know, I say it every time, but this is probably my fifth, I think, proper attempt and certainly my first at this scale. Uh, it was, if I remember off the top of my head, I think it was fifth, no, 47 long inches and oh, I can't remember what the width was. It was big anyway. It is big. It's still here waiting for a new home, by the way. So um, if you've seen this and you're interested, pop me a message. It is an interesting journey with pastels because I have a love-hate relationship with them, as most of you know. If you're new to my channel, you probably don't. Uh, I love the look of them. I hate the feel of them. They're just gross. <laughs> I'm not a fan of anything dusty or talky or that feeling. It just makes me go, yeah, don't like it, don't like it. But I love the effects that you get from pastels. So I sort of had to get over it a bit and just overcome the fact that what it's gonna make me feel like. So I've learned the hard way to just deal with it. But I wanted to talk you really through, not so much my process, because I actually found this one really difficult. I wanted to talk to you about how, I don't know, how I suppose it was really hard on my self-confidence because I really struggled with this. And if you're a seasoned pastel artist and you're watching this, look away, because I'm sure there's things in here that I have done that you're thinking, oh my God, what is she doing? But I'm still learning and I'm a self-taught artist. I haven't been to school. I went to school, university and did graphic design, but I never did art, apart from when back in my GCSEs, which was mm, 30 years ago. So yes, we were never really taught pastels apart from the big sort of chalky chunky pastel things and they were gross um so yeah i found the process really difficult because i didn't really know what i was doing and i have watched tutorials and i don't know i think because where you're so used to what i'm so used to working in pencil the method and the way of doing it is very different we work from light to dark whereas on pastels you work from dark to light and recently doing all my paintings and things like that it's learning i'm learning to loosen up so fingers crossed on the next pastel one i do because there is another one that i'm going to be doing uh i might loosen up a little bit with it and go a bit easier on myself the feathers were particularly hard and this was done on my webcam as well and as you can see from my face cam now i've upgraded the equipment um this is how old this picture is that's how long it's taken me to actually get my arse in gear edited and put it up so it's not showing off to its best potential but it gives you the idea at least anyway I'm waffling um yeah I found the feathers really really hard and I can't I'm not very good at sharpening pastels by hand in the sense that again they make my teeth go on edge so I'm having to rely on my sharpener which ideally I don't want to do because it can damage your sharpener long term but my swordfish pointy is actually doing a really good job so I'm actually actually how many times do I want to say actually I'm going to buy a second swordfish pointy p-o-i-n-t-i um, specifically for the pastels because I don't use the pastels that often it should be enough to at least last me a good six seven months possibly even to a year um, the photo by the way was taken by a guy called Jess Finlay who I 
found or happened upon a couple of years ago now on Instagram and he's been amazing and he allows me to use his wildlife photos um, as course as long as I credit him which I always do because it's always fair um, but yeah I found the feathers particularly difficult and I think possibly because there were just so many of them I chose this picture because of the colouring that he had all down his back and I thought that'd be a really really good challenge but I didn't realise quite how much of a challenge and I felt I struggled to get the iridescence that you get in hummingbirds and I know that had I done it in pencil I wouldn't have had this issue I wouldn't have had any problem at all and I probably would have just cracked on with it it would have taken a lot less time and I would have been a lot less angry or annoyed at myself for failing and you know a lot of people see confident artists doing these pictures they see time lapses not everybody does these voiceovers but I'm starting to do these now because I want to be honest with you through the journey and for those of you that are starting out the reality is that you're not going to be happy with everything you do you're not going to be happy with every outcome and you're probably going to get really annoyed and want to tear quite a few up because I've been there and done that but don't because there's a massive learning process to be done and I did learn an awful lot while doing this one don't do so many feathers again because I'm clearly nuts and especially at that size but two as I pushed through even though I wasn't happy with the final outcome I knew that as a final piece it actually really really worked and although it wasn't as vibrant and luminous I don't know what the word iridescent that I wanted it to be I was still very happy with the outcome and he received a very very good welcome to the world put picture reaction I don't know what I'm trying to say um, so you know you generally get a vibe from how things are you know you don't live for reactions from people but other people's reactions help you gauge at least whether or not you think you've been successful at what you've done but i um, mean how do you measure success do you want to rely on people's reactions to be our measure of success no absolutely not your measure of success is how happy you are with the final piece of work and overall by the time i'd finished i was actually very happy i did find it difficult to I don't know but I think the, the process when you work with pencils is I know that I'm working from there and I'll work there and I'll work there and I just have this flow this natural flow that happens but when it comes to pastels I'm like you know because you can't just simply you can but it, where where with pencils you want to add a few highlights you can get your blade and just scratch a little highlight out get your eraser and just get some nice long sweeping highlights and things like that um, I think honestly it's probably me because the tools are still quite young to me it's still all very new and although I've done five or six now in terms of art in a specific medium that's still new that's still new to a medium so I still have an awful lot to learn if I really wanted to I could have gone back and gone over with pencil but I actually felt like I put quite a lot of layers on there so I was struggling where I did put a couple of layers on there. The other thing is as well is because this is um, me TNT Touch which is by Canson and it's not as toothy as pastel matte but I really did enjoy working on it. So when it came to putting colour pencil on there, colour pencil being wax and it burnishes very quickly you have that stark contrast between the burnished wax and the flat of the pastel so I didn't want to go over too much with any pencil and I'm almost no not I'm almost I am I am glad that I didn't I am glad that I didn't go down that route and that just I carried on I think I did a tiny bit in the shadows because I couldn't for some reason I just couldn't get the shadows dark enough and I think I'm gonna have to get myself a charcoal pencil because as much as I think the black works very well, when you've got layer upon layer upon layer of pastel, I found it hard to get that on top. So I don't know whether charcoal would be an option. My cat, my cat, oh, my cat 
is meowing at me at the door to let her in. So I'm going to wrap up here in a minute anyway because you don't want to listen to me waffling all the way through. There's about five minutes left of the portrait left to go. So yeah, enjoy watching and I shall see you guys on the next video. Thank you.